Jesus once said, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. True repentance is a key part of the born-again life, yet it is not a one-time only event. It is an ongoing work that will become a normal and positive spiritual fruit in the life of Christians. We initially repent of our sins from our remorse and conviction over them, but the full forgiveness we receive comes only through Jesus Christ and the blood he shed for us on the cross. This ongoing repentance occurs naturally due to the remaining sinful nature of our flesh, and we, were to, we read accounts of this in places like Romans chapter 7. Uh, I have at verse 18 to chapter 8, verse 1, Paul has written, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would to do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into the captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Just remember, I mean, Paul obviously was a great Christian, <clears throat> and that's when he's writing these things. So what does that mean for us? So please understand that to say that there is an ongoing need for repentance isn't a reflection on our initial salvation at all, because that is still sufficient for us, for the righteousness of Christ will always stand. Yet I see two ways in which a Christian will naturally seek further repentance in their lives. One would be when we stumble in the way of a current temptation or some bad habit we're trying to overcome. Second, we may need to repent further when we become aware of something we had done in the past that was actually sinful. As we study the word of God and grow in the Lord, we would become aware of it. We need not to be in fear that any unknown sin may destroy us because we are not accountable for sins done in ignorance until we become aware of them, and then we have to repent. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 records a time when Christians at Corinth became entangled in a sin, and God used the apostle Paul to rebuke them. They had indeed been saved, but desperately needed a further repentance from sin. We see this same matter being addressed in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I have 6 through 10 noted, and the appropriate nature of godly sorrow, which leads us to repentance. Paul writes the following. This is in verses 8 through 10. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage from us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Yes, we as Christians still sin and otherwise disappoint God in many ways, but we still have access into God's grace by faith in Jesus Christ. And it is acknowledged that we hold this treasure of God's spirit and his salvation in our flawed earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power and the glory will be for God alone. All our lives, we will need the mercy of God and our redeemed spirits will naturally sorrow over sin and repent. Long ago, I remember a time I was sharing with a brother about a time I had stumbled as a Christian and my sorrow over it was evident to him. Yet he, with a cheery demeanor, replied, Yeah, but you're forgiven, right? <laughs> it was as if to imply that I, it shouldn't be bothering me anymore. But if I really do love the Lord, why shouldn't I be troubled at the remembrance of my sin, which was a grief to him? Brethren, we must never take sin lightly, make excuse for it or whitewash it. We need to crucify the flesh and put it away as often as it takes. This will be our pattern all the days of our lives here in the flesh. We remember what Jesus redeemed us from, and we love him greatly for it. Yet we need him still for more of the same. 
Our salvation is sure, but we still will be moved at times with sorrow unto repentance. Please remember, again, to check the description below for relevant scriptures. May God bless you.